German Obligations to Greece, Part 9 End of the War in Europe October 12, 1944 The Liberation of Athens Greeks celebrate their liberty. By October 13, all of Greece was free except for a piece of land in Crete named the Fortress of Crete where Germans remained as armed prisoners for seven additional months till May. The plan of the British allies was that if the National Liberation Front, which was dominated by communists, prevailed, the British would not allow the integration of Crete into a communist Greece. So the British, our allies, made a deal with the defeated Germans, our common enemies, that until British forces take over the island, the Germans will retain their weapons and carry out British orders. Clearly, that was not very friendly on the part of our allies. Therefore, for seven months we have what the philologist Stavros Vlontakis calls Anglo-German occupation in Hanya. The Germans were not prisoners, although they had signed their surrender. Moreover, the Germans were allowed to keep all of their weaponry, armored tanks and artillery, and they murdered or executed 45 Cretans. Also, in May 1945, they bombarded a populated village, Vatolakos, in the Hanya Plain, acts tolerated by our English allies. In the summer of 1945, just seven months after the liberation of the rest of Greece, the Germans of the fortress of Crete left the island bearing their arms under the protection of the British always. They left behind their heavy weaponry, which the English dropped into the sea so that they would not fall in the hands of the Cretans. As the erudite General Alexandros Ypsilandis, pioneer of the 1821 revolution, said, a stranger never helps another stranger without gain. The Battle of Berlin between April 16 and May 2nd, 1945, was the last battle of World War II in Europe. After the entry of Russians into Berlin and Hitler's suicide in April 1945, Germany surrenders unconditionally. General Keitel signs Germany's surrender in Berlin on May 8, effective May 9, 1945. End of the war in Europe. Winston Churchill greet the crowds in Whitehall. London, May 8, 1945. Allied positions on May 10, 1945. The participation of the Red Army of the Soviet Union, red symbols, but also of the United States, green symbols, was essential. The last act of the war in Europe took place at Villa Ariadne in Heraklion Crete on May 10, 1945, that is, seven months after the liberation of Greece and two days after the Germans surrendered to the Allies. This is how Villa Ariadne went down in history, the villa that Evans built in 1900 when he excavated Knossos. Eleven days after the surrender of the fortress of Crete, its flag came down on May 23, 1945, the penultimate Nazi flag in the world to come down, thanks to our allies, the British. The last Nazi flag remained in an outpost in the Arctic Circle, forgotten by gods and men. A consequence of the German occupation, the English intervention against the Greek Popular Liberation Army, alas, and the white terrorism after Varki's agreement, 
was the three-year Greek civil war between 1946 and 49, a form of fratricide reminiscent of Cain and Abel. The Greek civil war is considered as the first act of the Cold War, which unfortunately turned the United States and the Soviet Union from allies into rivals. U.S. General Eisenhower, upon liberation, ordered hundreds of photographs to be taken at the concentration extermination camp so that no one could question the German atrocities in the Second World War. He made Germans from neighboring towns to visit the camps and see for themselves the crimes against humanity committed by their compatriots. The author Stephen Mercantante writes that World War II was as designed as global plunder based on genocidal ideology, and that German soldiers willingly participated in bloody murders. The big three, it is the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the American President Franklin Roosevelt, and the leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, met at the Yalta Conference on February 4 to 11, 1945, and jointly decided the shape of the post-war world. The legend wants the zones of influence in the Balkan region written roughly on a piece of paper by Churchill's hand. However, the partition agreement was the result of the British-Soviet summit on October 9, 1944, in Moscow. Churchill proposed to Stalin that the USSR should have 90% mastery over Romania, 75% over Bulgaria, and 50% over Yugoslavia and Hungary. The Great Britain should have 90% mastery over Greece. After the war, the Marshall Plan, which provided financial aid to 16 countries in Europe, including Germany, gave the United States the opportunity to intervene in Europe. The first and best known of the Nuremberg trials was that of the major war criminals, which lasted for one year. 21 of the most important political and military leaders of the Third Reich were brought to trial. Hitler, Himmler and Goebbels had committed suicide. Here is the International Military Tribunal. On the left, one finds the defendants guarded by American military police, and in front of them, their lawyers. On the right, the prosecutors and the judges. The United States, Great Britain, Soviet Union, and France each appointed a regular and a substitute judge, as well as a public prosecutor. At least three out of four judges had to agree on any conviction. At the Nuremberg trials, several of the crimes committed by the Germans in World War II were considered crimes against humanity, punishable by the International Criminal Court. Robert Jackson, the USA Chief of Counsel, in his opening statement said, their acts have bathed the world in blood and set civilization back a century. They have subjected their European neighbors to every outrage and torture, every spoliation and deprivation that insolence, cruelty and greed could inflict. Civilization asks whether law is utterly helpless to deal with crimes of this magnitude by criminals of this order of importance. The United States Attorney's Office proceeded to conduct 12 more Nuremberg trials against junior officials of the Third Reich. However, the sentences imposed were extremely lenient in the name of future United States-German cooperation in the Cold War of the West against the Soviet Union. The 1946 Paris Peace Conference obliged Germany to pay war reparations to Greece in the amount of 6.7 billion US dollars 
1938 market value in compensation for wrecking its economic infrastructure. This amount equals to a German debt of 309 billion euros today, according to the Greek General Accounting Office. The Allies at the 1953 London Conference gave Germany a reprieve until Germany would be reunited. This happened in 1990 with the 4 plus 2 Treaty of Moscow when the reprieve was extended for another five years. It is till the end of 1995. Till today, in 2022, Germany refuses to pay its debt to Greece in violation of the aforementioned international agreements. The First World War, with Germany as the main aggressor, had approximately 66 million casualties. Post-war treaties imposed German reparations, a total of debt about 100,000 tons of gold. To help them out, Post-war America loaned huge amounts of money to Germany. Though Hitler, with his rise to power, cancelled Germany's debt from the First World War and with a loan from the United States, equipped Germany for the Second World War. Germany's debt to Greece from the First World War has never been settled and is estimated at a current value of 9 billion euros, according to the General Accounting Office of Greece. Interestingly, Germany made its last payment to the Americans for reparations from the First World War in 2010, that is, 92 years after its defeat. Consequently, the German excuse that the 80 years hiatus wiped out their debt to Greece is invalid. The compensations, reparations and the loan are imprescriptible. German debt from the Second World War 54 billion the occupation loan and 108 billion war reparations with 3% interest comes to about 1.2 trillion euros payable to the Greek state. It should be noted that, according to the calculations of the economist Janetos Gouskos, the German state owes Greece a much larger amount for its loans. It is worth watching the eighth part of this video series with the financial analysis of the economist Gouskos. These claims of Greece are legally active and legally enforceable. Actually, the Greek position is all the more strengthened by the 2019 report of the Scientific Committee of the General Federal Parliament, which, in contrast to the claims of the German government, acknowledges that there is no question of waiver or limitations of the Greek claims. Today, Greece suffocates under a debt of 390 billion euros, an amount much smaller than the German debt to Greece. Germany's refusal to pay its debt means that they don't acknowledge the harm they caused and thereby that they could again commit the same atrocities. Is it fair for Greece to pay about 20 billion euros per year for amortization and Germany nothing for its older and bigger debt to Greece? Overall, Germany owes to Greece enormous war debts because it plundered the Greek national wealth. It destroyed the economy of the country. It took prisoners and moved them to extermination camps. It practiced genocide and it looted archaeological treasures and works of art. Maybe worth adding that Germany also owes to Greece a cultural debt which dates back to antiquity and the demise of its Nazi government, at least in part due to the fight that Greece put up in the war at an extraordinary cost. It is inconceivable that today's Germany refuses to honor its obligations to respect rules prescribed by ethics and law. Does Germany deserve to be the core state of a unified Europe today?
The following organizations participate in our committee on German debts. International Hellenic Association, Canadian Hellenic Congress, Hellenic American National Council, the Livani Foundation.